here's some more Geography Gem. Here I am in Overstrand on the North Norfolk coast and this is an amazing example of coastal defences and hard engineering. Hard engineering is where coastal defences are built that are expensive and large structures. So we're going to have a look at some of them. So first of all I'm going to show you some rock armour. If you look far over in that direction there you should be able to see what looks like a massive pile of rocks. They are called rock armour. Now they've actually been um, imported from Norway those rocks so it's highly expensive to put them down because they're absolutely enormous those rocks. The purpose for putting them there is they try to prevent the water from hitting the cliff behind them with as much force so they break up the energy of the waves. One of the benefits of rock armour is that they look quite natural, they are quite attractive, they don't look massively man-made so rock armour is quite a nice form of sea defence and it is quite effective. Over here to the left of the rock armour you might be able to see the sloping barriers there. They are called revetments. Um, they're mainly made out of wood and their purpose is similar to rock armour, slow down the energy of the waves and then helping to trap sediment on the beach as well because the sediment on the beach, the stones here, they also help to protect the cliff face. So you want to try and retain them, don't let them get washed out to sea. So those are two types of coastal protection you can see here. Now further down, we will be, be able to see gabions, from, but from this particular point you won't be able to see them. So I'm going to take you now to see a sea wall in action. So a sea wall is the most effective form of coastal defence and the tide is currently in, so the sea wall is in operation and you'll be able to see it working. You will also see groins and I'll talk you through these as we go down there. So if you follow me, we'll have a look at the sea wall. into the bottom of the seawall. The seawall is a concrete wall. Um, it's the most expensive type of sea defence. It is also the most effective type of sea defence, but it is just disintegrating in this area. And you can see there are holes and cracks in that seawall. It's curved to try and help deflect the waves as they crash into it. Well, you've also got down here a groin. The groin is this wooden uh, thing that sticks out into the sea and the purpose of that is to try and stop longshore drift. Sediment and sand is being washed along this coastline and that sand helps to protect the cliff behind it so we don't want it to be carried off down the coast. So by building the groin what we can do is make sure that that sand gets trapped to one side of the land. Now I'm just going to walk you back up here because it's quite noisy down by the sea. Or do we decide it's not sustainable? 
Obviously, your opinion would differ depending on whether you're a resident whose home is going to fall in the sea, or you're in the council, or you're a taxpayer, because the money that pays for all these coastal defences ultimately comes from you, your parents, from me, people who are paying their taxes. Is it worth spending money on coastal defences, or is it completely unsustainable? And should all areas be following some form of a um, managed retreat?